Hey everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host Mr. Bevers. We're back with box number two of my personal War of the Spark case. That's right. You may have seen the videos where I opened up the case for Untouchables. So we did do that. We hit some pretty okay stuff for them. I think overall the case was kind of like mediocre. They got some decent stuff, but they didn't get, like, anything super crazy fancy. I, I think the best thing they hit was, what, Foil to Fairy. So, I mean, not terrible. But, I mean, like, our Foil Ugin, I think, is is already put us up above and beyond their case. And that was only in the first box. So, let's see what else we can find. Ral's Outburst. Flux Channeler, Obnixilus, let me just adjust my microphone here, alright, there we are, and Command the Dreadhorde, interesting enough, I can use this mat as nice little pile management, kind of works out, and we've got what, uh, an island and a zombie token, let's move along, we'll try to plow through this as fast as we can, I know that I am a little bit slow on the pack opening compared to some, but that's because I like to chat about these things. Kazamina. Kazmina? Yeah. Well, our first mythic, Finale of Eternity. There it is. And our first foil as well. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm missing I'm missing a light here. Let me just fix that. Let's see. How's that? Doesn't really help per se, but anyway, <laughs> it's on now, so. All right, Merfolk Skydiver, Rally of Wings, Arlen, there's Arlen, and a Dreadhorde Invasion. Well, Command the Dreadhorde, Finale of Eternity, and Dreadhorde Invasion. We've hit three black rares out of three packs. If you would open these three packs for, like, a sealed pool, you'd be in pretty good shape to play black, I guess, right? Um, considering all three of those black cards are definitely playable in limited. Vizier of the Scorpion, Flux Channeler, Eternal Taskmaster, and Soren. Wow, all right. That's pretty sweet. Uh, this guy's very good in limited. So, that's definitely worth um, playing in a black deck in limited. So, right now, we are uh, 4 for 4 on playable black rares for our sealed pool. Let's see. Gideon's Triumph, Neoform, The Wanderer, and Bolas's Citadel. All right. This one, not so much playable in limited, in my opinion, uh, just because it's just a little bit too hefty for what it does. Um, but still a black rare. So, I mean, we're now 5 for 5. Let's see. Let's see what else we find. Leyline Prowler, Bond of Revival, Tybalt, good old Tibbies, and Plain Wide Celebration. Well, can't have them all, right? Can't have them all. But only one off color rare for a sealed pool is pretty crazy, isn't it? Not that we're building a sealed pool out of this, but if we had, that would be pretty sweet. Eternal Skylord. Mrs. Triumph, Teo the Shield Mage, and Feather. All right. Feather's seeing a lot of play right now in Standard as well. Uh, pretty nice little angel that lets you get your spells back, essentially. All right. Dread Malkin, Bond of Revival, Hotly, and Blast Zone. Blast Zone's a good rare. A couple bucks there. It's like, um, we were talking about it at the store, at, L at the LGS the other day. It's kind of like a mix between Engineered Explosives and, like, Ratchet Bomb. Because it's, it's not as, it's not as fast as Engineered Explosives. Because you ha it only comes in with one and then you have to pay to put more counters on it. But it's faster than Ratchet Bomb because you don't have to tap it each turn to make, put one counter on it. But it's interesting. It's an interesting thing. Arlen again. And roll reversal as our rare. And we got a foil here. A foil Lazatep Reaver. 
with a uh, Voja friend of friend to elves token. Who doesn't like a little Voja, you know? Chandra's Triumph, Bond of Insight, Kazmina again, and Ignite the Beacon. We have a serious lack of uh, Planeswalkers here from the uh, the rare slot. Maybe that'll pick up a bit as the as the case goes on. Who knows? A Johnny's Pride Mate, Eternal Taskmaster, Hiora's Behemoth Beckoner, and a second Dreadhorde Invasion, which is sweet for me because I definitely want to build a Dreadhorde Invasion deck uh, and a mass deck. Um, so I'm okay with getting two of those. It's definitely nowhere near the price tag that people thought originally, like with saying that it was uh, uh, essentially Bitter Blossom 2.0, but it's not really Bitter Blossom because it just makes one token and makes it bigger. So people have started calling it Bigger Blossom, I guess. Is, that was sort of what's come uh, come about from it. Um, Angrath is pretty good. And Neheb. All right. So we've only got one Mythic and only one rare Planeswalker out of this box so far. Be interesting to see how many others we get here. Bleeding Edge, Tybalt's Rager, Firemind's Vessel, and Ral. Speaking of rare planeswalkers, there's the Ral man. Ral is very good in limited, um, like being able to essentially like um, turn your all your instants and sorceries into like a ping for one as well um, is very good, especially since you can target opponents or planeswalkers with it. So you can, like, ping their Planeswalkers down. And then his minus two ability is just pretty awesome. And the fact that his plus two ability scries one, and but it gives him two loyalty rather than just one. So very good. Samet, Tyrant Smasher. And Karn's Bastion. Another, like, a uh, few dollar land there. There's the token for the citizen. Yeah, the um, Karn's Bastion is another couple dollar land. I don't know exactly how pricey it is, but it is... Definitely up there. Neoform. Devouring Hellion. Hotly again. And Oath of Kaya. Oath of Kaya, very good for your um, for your walker decks, for sure. Um, the fact that it does three damage when it comes into the battlefield is pretty sweet in itself. And then it drains opponents when uh, when they attack your Planeswalker. So if you, all you have is a bunch of Planeswalkers that just cause threats, it's pretty sweet. Bleeding Edge, Ugin's Conjurant, Davriel, and Parhelion. The Parhelion, man. The thing that, like, is not super great, in my opinion. It's not very playable. It just costs way too much mana. And then it costs too much to crew it. Uh, Bond of Dis Discipline, Invade the City, Nahiri, and a second copy of Blast Zone. We'll take it. Tithe Breaker Giant, or Tithe, Tithe, Tithe Bearer Giant, I should say. My goodness. Um, but yeah, the, um, the thing I've noticed with these boxes, at least when I was opening up the boxes for Untouchables, I noticed that you're probably getting like two to maybe three duplicated rares in each box, which seems interesting to me, because a lot of the, like the previous sets... Like Dominaria, Ixalan, um, Core 2019, uh, and uh, the Ravnica sets, you didn't really see that. And it's not really, like this set's not really a lower number of cards than those. So the fact that the d duplicated rares are a little bit higher in the boxes means that their algorithm for shuffling the packs is not as good, I guess. And Grath, and then Massacre Girl. And we get... A foil Tybalt's Rager. With a wolf token and a planes. So it's just kind of interesting, like, with the duplicated rares, like... Because, I mean, it's... When you get duplicated rares that are good, you're like, that doesn't bother me. But when you get, like, a duplicated rare of, like, something garbage, like, you're just like, oh, no. Sahili and Time Warp. Oh, no. Let's do the Time Wipe again. Not time warp, time wipe. My my apologies, everyone. I get ahead of myself and just don't really read things, do I? Bond of Passion, Heartwarming Redemption, Jaya, and Single Combat. I've seen Single Combat played in, in Limited, 
and it's every time I've seen it played, it's been played by my opponent, and it's not helped them. <laughs> like, it's it's removed things off the table and just not helped them. Hotley's Raptor, Firemind Vessel, Ashiok, and Deliver Unto Evil. The art's beautiful. The art's beautiful. The card itself is not great, but the art is beautiful. Alright, we need to find some more mythics here, don't we? Dread Melkin, Emergence Zone, Kaya, and Fibblethip. Fibblethip the Lost. Not so lost anymore. We did find him. We did find him. Paradise Druid, Nissus Triumph, Yang, and Widespread Brutality. Good old brutality. So we want to find some more mythics. And also some more rare planeswalkers. We're only sitting at two. That's pretty low for a box. Mayhem Devil. Cyclops Electromancer. Tyrant Scorn. And there's another planeswalker. Sarkin the Masterless. You want to make all your walkers into dragons? I know you do. I know you do. The interesting thing about Sarkin is that it really mucks up your opponent's attack step because it deals a damage to each creature that attacks you, right? It's like whenever a creature attacks you or a Planeswalker you control, this deals one damage to it. So, like, if they have a 3-4 on the table, it now becomes a 3-3, so you can block it with a 3-2 and kill it, right? Like, it makes the trades much worse for your opponents. Tybalt's Rager, Eternal Taskmaster, Dovin, and... Finale of Devastation. The good one, right? That's the good finale, right? Everybody, that's the one everyone wants. This is like super washed out here, isn't it? Like, look at that. Can I, if I do this, is it better for me to just like turn this light off? Let's see. Can you guys see that better without that light on? Maybe it's better to just not have that light on. I have to find a way to, like, diffuse that light a little bit better so that it does still give some light, but it just doesn't, uh, like, maybe I can, like, can I, like, turn it away some more? Let's see. How about that? Is that better? Not really, eh? I can turn it this way? Well, see, we're working on this together here. Augur of Bolas. Ugin's Conjurant. Jaya and Tomric. Tomic. Distinguished Advocist. And we're hoping that this box isn't the two mythic box out of our case. And if it is, then does that mean each case has gotten a box with two mythics in it? Because if that's the case, then that's kind of weird, isn't it? Storm the Citadel, Domri's Ambush, 10th District Legionnaire, and a second copy of Ral. So, there you go. We've had three copies of... Uh, we've had three duplicated rares now. We have two Rals. We have two Blast Zones. And we have two Dread Horde Invasions out of this box. So, this is what I was saying. is like It's basically... You're looking at getting between like two and three duplicated rares. We'll see if we get a fourth now. I don't know. Maybe it'll just make a liar of me. We got God Pharaoh's Statue, Gideon's Triumph, Kiora, and Narset's Reversal. And again, we're looking pretty uh, shallow on Mythics here. So hopefully we're not going to be in the same boat as Untouchables with a two mythic box. That would be not great for us, wouldn't it? Sunblade Angel, Devouring Hellion, Gleaming Overseer, and a Johnny. A Johnny is really good in limited, very very good in limited, giving your creatures vigilance and then also just being able to down tick him for two and put a one one counter on all of them so that you can then proliferate them to make them bigger. Pretty sweet. Paradise Druid, Ral's Outburst. Challenger Troll, and another rare Planeswalker, Teferi, and a foil Dreadhorde Invasion. <laughs> we got three copies of Dreadhorde Invasion in this box. That's super weird. Super, super weird. I mean, like, getting it duplicated is pretty hilarious, and then getting a third copy but foil is kind of like the cherry on top, right? Watley's Raptor, Bond of Insight. 
Pledge of Unity and another rare Planeswalker. Ooh, Liliana. Yes, I will. I will take Liliana. Thank you very much. That puts us to three Mythics. We've now surpassed the Mythic count. We are no longer going to get a two Mythic box. We've got a three Mythic box minimum. All right. And and our, I was going to say our foil count is a little bit low too, but then we just opened two foils back to back. So The other thing I talked about in the last video, video one for box one, is that a lot of our Mythics came from the last row. And so far, we've gotten two of our three Mythics from the last row. If there's another Mythic in the last row, Vraska, and commence the end game. Commence the end game. All right, Evolution Sage, very good uncommon. Bond of Flourishing, Narset, and Living Twister. Come on and twist again, like we did last summer. I mean, sorry, sorry, sorry. Rubble Belt Rioters, Bond of Discipline. Pledge of Unity, and Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. All right. Two packs left. Two packs left. Come out of there, cards. What do we got? Grateful Apparition, Angrath's Rampage, Samut, and Vivian's Arcbow, which is, I was talking about this card. I really enjoyed playing with it. In my limited pool. I had a sealed pool with it. I had a sealed pool with this and Oketra. And I was like, I'm going to play this. And I'm going to just always pay five mana. And just always dump Oketra into play. That's my plan. And I just like totally flung a whole pile of cards off the table. And you guys didn't see it. But you probably heard it. Yeah, they're all over the floor. Emergence Zone. Lillian's Triumph. Teo. And Dread Horde Butcher. So we did only get a three mythic box, which is pretty, it's actually below average in my opinion. Most of the boxes we've opened so far, including the ones four untouchables, have had five. So I would say the average is probably four, um, because I think their boxes were a little bit above average. Um, because they did get one with two in it, and then they got a, and then the rest of them all had five. So I would say like four to five is probably your average um, of mythics. Um, so getting three is below average in my opinion. Uh, I would think you would get at least four. Um, we also didn't get very many rare planeswalkers. We only got what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven, so not that many. And two of them are the same. We got two rals. So like, ideally, we would hope for like maybe another one, like maybe a like a a Vivian or a not a Vivian. Is it Vivian? Yeah, Vivian or Nissa, um, something like that, right? You know, we would expect to see one of those, maybe. Who knows, right? Um, but, yeah. I mean, overall, the box, not terrible. The foil's a little bit low, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven foils, so kind of, like, mediocre. Like, on the low end of the foils, I would say. Like, I think the low end of foils is, like, six to seven, and the high end is, like, nine to ten. Um, so your middle is right around eight, right? So we're just below average, I think. With the number of foils. Um, I mean, we got two Blast Zones. We got a Karn's Bastion. We got uh, three copies of Dread Horde Invasion. Crazy. Now, our Mythics are not terrible because we did get Liliana and Finale of Devastation, which are the like two of the higher Mythics. So that's pretty good. I think overall the box was not terrible. It was definitely not terrible. Um, thank you so much for watching, everybody. This was box number two. Stay tuned for box three next week. Uh, if you want to help support the channel... Uh, and you have a couple bucks to spare, by all means, go check out my Patreon. Uh, but don't think that you're not going to get anything, because, of course, all the patrons at pretty much any of the MTG levels get something in return, like a little grab bag every month of cards that I've opened up on the channel, um, stuff like that. So, you know, the, you do get stuff in return for your uh, gr generous donations. And if you can't support with monetary value, don't even worry about it. Thanks for just watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, but also don't forget, if you ever are looking for singles and stuff, I do have a store page, nerdvanastore.ca, where you can go and check it out and pick up some singles if you want. I try to keep my prices below uh, TCG low prices, so that way you are getting a little bit of a discount, essentially. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and as always, may your pulls ever be better.